Good morning everyone, welcome to my channel. So today I'm diving back into my uh, French garden down the garden path Roxy Creations project and I feel like I haven't been working on it for ages which I pretty much haven't and I wanted to work on the little house. Now I've drawn in red here the window box outline and I think I did that probably two months ago. Let me zoom in and show you. So I must have been tossing some ideas around and have sketched in roughly a window frame divider, a bit of an outline for the actual house, like the architrave that would go around the house. And then I've got some little dots and dashes and that through here. So I must've been thinking a bit of a window box with flowers in it. I still like the idea. I'm still happy to go with that. The other thing I was wondering is how I bring some flowers onto the little house. And I guess the classic way to do it would be to run a vine up here and then explore it sort of cascading across the house. Just still like that idea. Now, where's my erasable pen? Here it is. I'm wondering what would that look like? And the thing I've got to compete with are these dots. They're pretty, they're pretty strong. So whatever I did would have to compete with dots and push them back, I think. Um, and then it'd be very big flowers on a very little house. Does it matter? Probably not because perspective on this is really out the window, literally. <laughs> Do I just bring it so that it comes, just creeps up onto the little house? That could be one way around it. And then it might not look like a creeper that's going onto the house and it looks like it's part of this oversized flower arrangement here. The other thing that I could do is, I could do with softening that edge like a, a piece of lace or something to go here. I definitely like to running stitch around the edge of the house roof. Like um, there's some browns, I'm thinking they'll be brown. I like do a little running stitch like that. That'll help bring in the size of the roof in a little bit. And it just, just adds that little bit extra detail. So I think that would be pretty cute. And then maybe find some form of trim that goes through. And I think thinking maybe once I've got those two elements in, then I'll decide whether this, this shrub or vine or tree, that's the golden question, comes up like a tree or drapes like wisteria across the roof line. Hmm. I think first thing, is what are we going to use on the gutter? And then that tells us if the brown line, the outline comes into play. So we need, we need an edge from something. So we need a lineal line. Don't mind that, it's gathered. Which sort of feels like it's softening. I think we might have to lift. Do we lift the doily or do we go under the doily? I think we're going to go under the doily. So let's do a little bit of invisible stitch. Back you go, snipping. Don't mind this ribbon, uh, this uh, lace because it's soft and creamy and dimensional. So I do like that. Is there anything better? Sort of really like crochet edges. Is there a doily in here that has a little strip? 
straight edge. I don't know if there is. This is lace. Sort of don't mind that. What else is in here? <clears throat> the box that I just keep rummaging in and it's like the gift that keeps giving. And every time I get a scrap, I just throw it into the box. You can't even see the box. Hang on a minute. Let's go up so you can see my classic bits and bobs. Sort of looking for that long line. Is there anything on that? Not really. I sort of want it to have a finish line. Okay, here's a hanky. We like hankies. That would give us a crocheted edge. So we could remove that edge, that piece there would be just about long enough to do the trick. So it'd be that little edge, let's get rid of all of that so I can sort of get a feel for what it looks like. That little soft edge or that little edge. or something a little bit flatter. I bet you're all yelling A, B, or C. I don't know, I was sort of tending towards this little scalloped one. And I like the fact that it's got this little line on top of the lace because then I could come across there with that visual line as well and then carry on up here well, it would sort of make it feel like it's meant to be so that's definitely i think that's a bit boring i think we can do better than that i think this is too white I feel like I've got a lot of those sorts of tones nearby, like up here. That I could do with something and the windows are so white. I feel like it's this one. And we go down with the lace. Yeah. I think that's it, guys. I like that scalloped edge like a little wrought iron edge to the top of the house or do we put it up Ooh. now I'll make a decision girl I'm gonna go down it feels like it's got to go down so I'm just going to pin it. I'm going to leave it hanging. As in, I'm not going to stitch down this three-dimensional. Let's get rid of this piece underneath before we pin everything. Yeah, I'm not going to, not going to stitch that down. We're going to leave it hanging and it's going to create a bit of a shadow line there, which I think will help convince convinces that it is like a gutter, guttering or a decorative wrought iron trim. We do need that little guy to go up. So I might even just stitch this side first. Let's pin it in. I might just snip that back. There's a couple little stitches there. 
Don't ever be afraid to trim back your invisible stitch. It's just needle and thread and you can just go straight back over the top with more when you've worked out your layers. It's impossible to know exactly where all your elements are going to go when you're collaging fabrics together because it's layers upon layers and then you'll come back and rework an area and add more layers. I think that needs to be lower. It's got a bit high. I liked how it was nearly touching the windows. It sort of felt like it was a little bit more true to the architecture. If you were to sketch something like this, like a, a little house in a village. Yeah, that's good. That'll tuck in there nicely. So that'll just be invisible stitched down. And then I will come around with this thread. I'll probably just do a running stitch, I'm thinking. I'll just cut a piece off. I'll have a quick little play with it. And that'll tell me whether it happens. All right, so let's let's get in up here. Now the chimney could also do with a little bit of highlight detail. So let's just do a running for now. I don't think I'd want to do a, a sat uh, a stem or something stem stitch because I don't want to be too strong and overpowering. It's just another layer of stitching and detail. Does that make sense? So we're going to turn the corner now. Let me just spin my work around. I might just zoom in. Just have to be mindful that you guys can still see. So let's just run along this edge been thinking about this house for so long and because the prompts have best just been so involved the house has sort of been is that crooked looks crooked oh no it's just because this piece of lace is hanging in the air there it's given the illusion that it is I think because the prompts have been so involved, it has literally taken months to get back to it. And I think we laid, I think I laid this house down in probably episode six. I think, I don't know, I'd have to check. It just feels like forever. Just running that down there, stacking that needle with fabric. That helps me keep a, a fairly straight line. Now, if I remember rightly, see this edge here? The whole roof and house was needle turned. So it was fabric was tucked under. Did you, did you get that up? The fabric was tucked under and it was slip stitched down into position. But I ran out of fabric because I wanted to use this little scrap and I didn't have enough down here to actually turn it under. So that's a raw edge sitting there where everything else is needle turned. And I remember at the time that I said that, look, let's not worry about it because we'll try and put something foliage up there that would disguise it or... So I think whatever we do as a branch, a tree or a vine, needs to take into account that we've got that little spot to I guess disguise like no one will ever spot it if they look at the piece but um, I know it's there and I know it does need some form of treatment now what I might do is yes I haven't exactly slow stitched or uh, invisible stitched this lace into position but I think what I might do is carry on with my thread let me just get myself back around. I might carry on with it. It will 
hold it in a decorative way, but I will need to come back with the invisible stitch and just make sure that lace is seated properly. See, already I don't like that stitch. Look, I'm going to stop because I'm trying to do something ahead of something. Let's get this lace into position. It's a bit of a tricky move I was trying to pull there. And I guess if I wasn't in too much of a hurry to get as much as I can into an hour, I'd probably take my time and do it all in one. You know, use the brown cotton to get it right. But it'll end up crooked. I can already see I took a stitch that wasn't the right size. So I just want to catch it down, remove the pins. There's no rush, is there? It's never a rush. What will be, will be. When it comes to stitching, sometimes you have the best laid plans and you think, I'll get this done, I'll get that done. I've got an hour, no problems. And you just find yourself absorbed into a location on your piece and you're like, well, what did I achieve? And then other things just go so quickly. Okay, now we're, now we're good to go. So I'm just gonna scoot along there with this cotton and tack it down. I'll just make it so much more secure too because yeah the running stitch will do the job but it's not it's not what I call secure stitching it's probably a little bit more decorative and I can feel there's a bit of bulk here from this lace due to that little top edge so it is sort of pushing back at me a little bit here On these two, I can make sure it's straight. We don't want crooked guttering. It's not an old house. It's a well-maintained, main, loved house. So there's no crooked guttering. Um, I say that, but I might get to the end of it and go, okay, we've got crooked guttering. It's a dodgy little house with crooked guttering. <laughs> oh, boy, oh, boy. Pick up your pins, girl. Don't just fling them out and then you have them everywhere. I'm in one of those moods. I've been doing so many little chores around the house, but I've got 20 chores half done around the house. I haven't finished one task yet. Oh, it's going to be a long day today. And then halfway through it, I'm like, oh, I'm going to go and do some sewing. That's a little bit short. Let's just manipulate that down a little. So yeah, and I've ended up here. And if my husband was to walk through the house, he wouldn't know what I was actually doing because, see, I've got a problem. That is too short. Something has gone wrong along the line. See what I mean? You think you're going to do it in a certain time and you suddenly have gone through and achieved very little. Did I cut that too short? Or did I start it too far over? And those few mil of... Did my pins gather it too much? Possibly. Let's get this running stitch back up out of here. Whoop, I'm pulling out that thread. Okay. Let's try that again. Yeah, see, I've got at least a quarter of an inch in past the little house. So I need to move my whole little piece of lace over a little bit. 
I think that'll be better. I still think I may have cut that a little bit short. Let's have another go at that, guys. Let's get this top stitch thread. See, that's why you invisible stitch things. You just make sure then that everything will work. Now I'm going to attempt this without pins. How possibly could it go wrong? It's not like it's a gathered lace, so there's not much give in it. It's sort of going to have to be pretty spot on. Yeah, it's going to be fine. So let's just make sure we're nice and straight. So there's a quick redo. Okay. Nearly there. Perfect. So at least I did cut it right. It's just the beginning was just a little bit too far over and I just didn't quite make it to the very end. Okay, I won't stitch down that doily yet to come in. We'll just leave it until I can get through there with that top stitch, that chocolate top stitch. Okay, invisible stitch done. So now we can carry on. There's my puppy dogs, it's Pepper. Someone must be out walking and Pepper's giving them the royal doggy salute. See that stitch there to me is a bit small too. So look at that. Let's just back it up a bit. Mm, sorry guys. It's funny you hear a dog barking probably a kilometre away. And then suddenly Pepper starts and it's like, well... The only thing I heard was the dog barking literally a kilometre away. Incredible, aren't they, how they send the message? Mind you, Pepper's the only one in the street. There's quite, uh, pretty much a, two dogs at every house by the end of the cul-de-sac. We're probably only about two or three houses off the end of the street. And everyone's got at least two dogs. None of them barked except Pepper. Even Bandit didn't bark then. But I could hear a yappy little bark, probably a kilometre away. Bandit's running with her, but he's not, he's not chatting about it. And yet sometimes there'll be a message come down from the doggies in the street and everyone, I wonder if they're all in bed or playing with their owners and they're like, oh, Pepper's got it. Pepper's passing the message. <laughs> Who knows? Don't speak dog. Okay. So let me just turn my work. So that's nearly it for the little... It's all right, Pepper. And then it'll be just a case of reinstate that little bit of invisible stitch. What have I done? What have I done? Oh, that's good. Now, the chimney. Seen them here and I have thread left. I might try. How much do I have? I might try a little running stitch. Right up there. So I've got probably just enough to scoot across the top. Oh, Pepper, Pepper Peach. She 
He's definitely the boss at this place. I'm gonna, gonna end it off and I'll get another piece of brown cotton. It's just probably about four centimeters too short. But if I keep going, I'll end up not being able to get a decent knot off. Is that even a word, knot off? There you go, new word for wee stitches. I'm going to knot off that. Okay, should we finish it? Ah, look, now I will. I'm still thinking about those flowers, so while we think, it's, we might as well be stitching. There's a section of needlework on here too that I just do not like. And I can't decide if I pull it out or is it just me? You know when you've got those bits that you just, ah, what was you thinking? And I think it's a bit of a colour problem. Don't know. I won't show you that spot yet. I'm still looking at it, wondering if I should rework it. Okay, let's just whiz up this side. A couple little stitches. All right, so we now have guttering. Our roof is now formed with a little bit more detail. Happy with that. This colored thread, my leftover, will be used around the windows. I'm gonna say I'm probably going to do stem stitch there. Let's have a look, knock this off. Gee, Pepper's still wound up. Must be because she's the only dog on duty. Everyone else has not re replied or answered, so she's feeling like the whole security of the street is in her paws. <laughs> now, the windows. Do we couch on something? Or do we do a fine line? What could we couch? What could we couch in there? As in stitch. Let me grab my big box of cottons. Anything of interest in there? This is a fairly heavy little thread. That would give us a bigger line. I'm creating more work for myself, aren't I? So if I lay down that, couch it over. I'm sort of looking for that cracked split timber look. And I think if there were little stitches going over that thread, it would give the eye that feeling. If I was just to do a running stitch or a stem stitch, it'd be very fine and very, very precise. A clean, I guess is what I'm saying. I think I want that ragged old timber look, like the timber's a bit split. Where's my needle? So I've got my little thread coming through. I'm just going to thread up this slightly thicker. I don't think I'd want to go any thicker. It's like a pearl cotton. Let's just pick up the Remembering I want to do a blanket box as well. Oh, not a blanket, <laughs> a blanket box, a flower box. Now I forgot to knot it. So what I could do, let's just suss out the bottom of the box. If that went across to there, being that it's a little bit more flexible in shape do we do I then go back across to there 
That's the start of the box. Probably going too far ahead without having couched anything down yet, but I can always undo it because that'll be full of flowers, as in probably French knots, I'm going to say. I'm going to go a little bit past the window frame. A little bit over here. I think it just want to give us that little bit of detail around the window. Yeah, I like that. And I guess when it comes to the cross through the window, we could change colours or we could continue with this thread. Let's continue and see. And we'll keep it inside the white. Won't let it touch the outer edge, I think. Yep, let's turn that around. Now I might just let that hang because that'll be the only one affected by me not having that taut. The rest is sitting really well. So let me just re-stitch. Re I'll re-thread my needle and sneak up over all of those threads. Now I'm happy enough for the stitch to be visible to a degree. Like I said, it's going to give that clean straight line a little bit of roughness, I think. It'll look like it's a wider piece of timber than it actually is. Yeah. That's good. And I guess if I get to the end and I feel like the window frame is not thick enough, I can always run another line just to give it a little bit more structure. And I don't want it to look too perfect either. I want that fabric, that white fabric, to look like a little bit awkward in there, if that makes sense. Otherwise, I would have needle turned, edged it all. I sort of want it to look like a patch. Now, I'm going to create a mess under here if I'm not careful, because I still have that cross stitch, that one there hanging loose. I think I need to redo it a little because it's not quite to the edge of the white fabric. I sort of don't want it touching the frame, but I do want it to look like it's come from that white edge. I guess I'm trying to create a shadow line for my box, window box or window frame. So I might just, all right, that's all good. I can keep going and finish couching. So I can feel my thread underneath is up in my fingers out of the way. So let's just a couple little stitches here. That'll hold everything. This will be all embellished with flowers. So that's going to be pretty much pinned down anyway but I will pop these few little stitches just to know then it's okay so I'll let that thread hang and I'm going to pull this one back out pull it out from behind I'm going to try and bring it up more on the white So I might have to come back out here a little bit. Yeah, that's better. Pepper's really quite wound up. It's straight. Let's spin it around, have a look. Yeah, that's pretty good. 
It doesn't have to be perfect. And like I said, I'm not gonna couch it down because I sort of want that three-dimensional feel like the, the white is curtains within the house or it could be glass, it's, it doesn't really matter, it's just that it's inside the window. I hope there's not someone dodgy outside and Pepper's the only one awake, alerting everyone. Let's just finish this off. She's certainly wound up. Okay, good. That's the window frame sorted. So I need that thread and that thread kept aside for my homework. Now, the real trick is to pick a color that the flowers can be in the window box that they still stand out enough and are not lost in on the background. That can sometimes be the hardest thing to do. You put all your work into some flowers somewhere and you can't even really notice them because they're just not quite right colors. So, and it's tricky for us because we're really only pinks or reds. So, which Maybe I need to look for something three-dimensional that could go in there. Just glancing across to all the lace on my table. What about, what about those flowers there? Just going to disappear. Hmm. Where's some red? There's some red or some gold. Do we even have gold on this? No. What about beads? What about beads? When all else fails, turn to your beads. We could do. Um, pink beads, maybe. Let me have a look. Hang on. What about some little pink beads? Let's have a play with my needle. It does beads. Now, I definitely need some green in there, some like little, like the hint of a leaf. So let's just pop up with the needle, anchor it with a stitch or two. I really should have started with a longer length, but it doesn't matter because we're just testing, testing things. Okay. We could probably even mix those little creamy ones in too. Might have to get the iron too before I get too far ahead of myself and start really stitching. I might just put a bit of heat in there and get rid of all my red lines just so that it's not, you know, they're not in my way. I think that is going to be my flower bud. Little itty bitty pink beads in the flower pot. And then I've just got to find a yarn or a cotton that can do a little French knot that they will be nestled in amongst. So I'm just going to end that thread off because the beads are a definite. This will be fun to bead up tonight. OK, 
can play with the flower pots. Now let's have a look at, so I'll put my needle there so I know it's there for later. Now let's have a look at some greens. If I do a variegated green, it'll make it look like there's a bit of light in there. But is this cotton, which is a 12, thick enough? I suppose if I'd wrap it a few times, Okay, maybe one, two, three, four. And then slide it down. What's that look like? Uh, it's not bad. I know once I get a bit of bulk in there with it. One, two, three, four, five. Let's try another loop just to get a bit more height in the knot. Yeah, that's better. I'm going to do one that's six wraps. One, two, three, four, five, six. You guys probably can't get the feel for the definition here of height. Yeah, that's better. And I'm hoping the variegation, I'm going to put one more as if it's draping off of the side of the box. I'll keep the corner in place. See that brown little corner coming around there because I want the eye to know that that is one, two, three, four, five, six. It is actually a window and it has finished, but... I want this French knot that I'm doing now just to come off off the edge of the sill of that box just a little bit. Yep. Yep. That's good. One, two, three, four, five, six. Gee, I'll be over French knots by the time I do these three windows, but that's okay. It'll create quite a dense little piece of foliage there, I think. And I'll sort of meander up and down, up and down, as if it's sort of just draping over those. One, two, three, four, five, six. Did I say six? One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I might put one above the bead, just a sprinkling of green. One, one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. I think we've got our flower box sorted and I've unthreaded the needle halfway through a French knot. Oh. One, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. Just a hint of green. I may even put a third line in there. I just, just not sure. This will be my last one. One, two, three, four, five, six. Oh no, I think I sort of like how it looks like a bit of lights bouncing there. I can definitely see it transition in the thread those last two knots are a lot darker than the first few. Don't know if it'll be a big enough of a transition to actually notice when you glance at the piece, but 
there is some movement of light there. Okay. Well, I think I've got my window box of flowers sorted. There'll be little green clumps drifting along that edge. I can't go crazy with it. It'll overpower that whole frame. And then I'll pop in there some little beads. I might even visit the little cream bead as well. I sort of feel like that I could get away with a flower that's changing its tone. You know, when they sort of go through a phase and they're pink and then slowly pale pink. I sort of think I could get away with a few little cream ones, but that'll that'll happen if it happens. Okay, now I guess we've got to make a decision on what this branch is going to be. What have we got that's interesting that could go up there? This is a zigzag braid I got in Paris and it's got embroidered onto it. No. No. It was a fleeting idea. There's nothing over there I don't think suits. Um, mm, I like that. I wonder, I wonder if we do, where's my wool that's in chocolate? What if I stem stitch a branch up there in say three threads? So it's quite substantial. And then using this burgundy sari silk, which is quite firm. What if I cut out a circle in it? Like a little... How are we going for time? We're right. We're right. Cut out a little circle so it looks like a little rose and then put a knot in that rose that'd make it look like it's quite a thick what's this what about a pink or do we put a bead a bead would be fun Sort of like the idea of carrying on with these beads. Um, I'm pretty confident that something like this would work as the some Appleton wool, you know, maybe twisted a few times. Let's just grab a little bit out. And then See, we want it to be fairly substantial in thickness. I wonder if I've got some wool. No, I don't usually knit with dark green, so I doubt it. I think I could create... Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hold, hold that. Hang on one second. I do, I do, I do. I have this wool that I got in Paris from Chanel. They use these textures to, look at that. Anyway, they use these textures to um, make their pieces of fabric, you know, the weaving. I could use this, let's put the Appleton away. Or maybe we leave the Appleton out because it could be the couched down thread. You're probably thinking she's not making sense. Trust me. Just getting myself reorganized. What I'm thinking is using this yarn, probably.
probably, let's just give us a decent amount. Let's put two of them together and we'll twist them. Going to need to once again lift some invisible stitches that are down here. Yep. We put in our little tree or our vine. We're calling it a vine. Let's just put a pin for now there. I can couch that down all the way up. And then when I get up here, this twisted, loosely twisted vine can drift up to the top of that house where that'll cover that open edge there. And just loosely pin it at the moment. So it's starting to sneak along the gutter of the little house. And then once I get that down, Going to cut it there. Why? Don't know. Just sort of felt like that was the right size branch. Is it starting to sneak across the roof of that little cottage? I think this one is far enough to there. And we'll do a third little sprig coming out of probably that centre coming up as well. Just a little branch to there. It'll feel quite three-dimensional, like it's an old, like an old shrub been there a while then we will have a really good think about these flowers but I think that's enough for now I need to get my bases in and then we'll come up with a, a three-dimensional rose-like shape I'm thinking so that's about all the yarn I need so I can just tuck that if you're not familiar with using yarns and you see some around that you really like always pull from the center you'll find there's a little clump of yarn twisted up and just poked in the center there don't try and find the end um, pull from the center and you'll be able to wind all of that out say you were knitting you'd wind all of that out into your garment and you'd still have this little lacy edge until it finally got to the point where it would you know collapse just a random piece of information. I'm sure you know that. These are all multi-skilled, talented folk. Let me just get another pin there. My little flower is tucked in behind it, but I'm okay with that. I don't think I want that flower to come on top of the plant. It's coming up around the back maybe of that house. Just make it disappear like it's around the side of the house as well might need to add a little sprig in here but there's leaves and that yet to be added potentially so and if i couch that down with this appleton wool i think it'll make it look quite interesting just do a couple stitches and that'll tell me that it'll work and then I can take take that yarn with me see I've got one little piece left I'll keep that let's just I might um, I've pinned it to the piece hang on a minute guys it's got to release release a bit of that oh, 
goodness sakes. Goodness sakes. I've pinned it again. Sorry, guys. Just getting myself positioned. All right. So awkward. That's better. I'm trying to grab hold of it without grabbing a handful of pins. Ow, there's a pin. I'm going to try and keep it quite fluid. Try not to be too tight on my couching stitch so that I don't lose the bulk that is that yarn. It's so pretty. I've got a hang of a needle here that I'm using to couch and it's such a big thing. I'm going to couch the twist, I think. You'll see what I mean when I come up over this side. The yarn is twisting, so I'm going to make it look like there's actually two, two stems. It sort of reminds me of those rainforest vines that are just all single lines, but there's multiple of them going up, and often they'll hang on to each other as they twist around a, a tree. Gives them tremendous strength. Like they're a parasite vine. I mean, you go to pull it down and you're not just dealing with one vine, you're dealing with multiple vines that have all entwined. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll finish that thread there cut another piece and then come up that vine again. It's quite an invasive vine, this one. Now, I do need to wrap all that. Grab another little piece. Okay. Needle. Just coming into our golden hour. So what I'm going to do is try and start it again down the bottom here and wrap again. See, I'm rushing now because I can see I've literally got a minute. <laughs> oh, it won't matter if we go over a little bit, will it? You guys aren't going anywhere. If you've hung in this long, you're committed to the end. Okay. Now I'm going to wind it up, but this time following the second twist. Should make the vine a little bit of interest about it. Because my stitch is laying a slightly different angle to the last, it should look quite interesting as a tree vine slash. I'd really like to do wisteria, but I sort of feel like wisteria needs to be purple, and I don't have purple on this piece, and I'm like, oh, I'll do it another time. There we go. Now the vine can start heading in its different directions, and I'll just follow those two threads out to wherever they may lead, but that's got this twisty, twisty textured 
you know, vine coming up the side of it. And I feel like it has blended well. It doesn't look like it's out of place to its surroundings. It's quite substantial, which is good. And then I can break it up and then we can have a look at leaves or some flowers or some clusters of something sort of working its way through the vine as it comes up and heads up over the little house. All right, guys, I think I have a plan. I will have a stitch this evening and um, I'll be back to show you where I'm at. And then, yeah, we'll work on the flowers, I think, in the next video. Okay, look after yourselves and I will see you all in the next video. Bye for now.